Hi, I'm Deanna Springer. And I'm Dana Casey with a fun Stitched Sisters sewing project and classic time-saving tips by Nancy Zeman. First, let's take a look at the project we're making today. We'll be making our Wrap It Up Casserole Carrier with Wildflower Boutique Fabrics by Heather Peterson for Riley Blake Designs, Pellon Soft Shape Interfacing, Clover's Double-Sided Basting Tape, Size 90 Denim Needles, this insulated casserole carrier is perfect for picnics, potlucks, and everyday dinners. Our wrap it up casserole carrier easily opens and closes with hook and loop tape. It features a hidden inner pocket for a pot holder, hot pack, cold pack, and then place a cold dish or hot dish in the center of the casserole carrier and wrap it up. And our Wrap It Up Casserole Carrier makes a great gift for a bridal shower, birthday, or housewarming. We'll start making our Wrap It Up Casserole Carrier by first preparing the fabrics. Head to the ironing board and press and starch and press and starch your fabrics. Steam and pre-shrink and pr press a second time with that spray starch. Then we'll cut some rectangles. Easy rectangles for the casserole carrier. We'll cut all of our rectangles 13 by 36. So it's super easy to remember. You'll be cutting all rectangle elements 13 by 36. Okay. We'll start by cutting an outer rectangle. This is for the outer casserole carrier. And then we cut a coordinating inner casserole carrier one layer of each. And then we need to cut some layers. We'll need two layers of Pallon Soft Shape to attach to the back of each of the outer fabrics. Okay. Inside, we'll need Teflon Iron Quick fabric. It's a fabric, but it has a little bit of heat uh, barrier or cold barrier, depending on what dish you put inside the casserole carrier. This reminds me of mom's ironing board when we were young. It is, it's exactly <laughs> what it is. And actually, you can make this quilted if you want to. Okay. We're not doing that today, but if you take the next layer, the Pallon Insel Fleece, and put that together, you can head to your sewing machine and do some quilting stitches, just straight line quilting stitches at a 90 degree angle, a diagonal angle, and make your own uh, Teflon Iron Quick quilted fabric. Oh, nice. But we'll just be placing the fabrics together without quilting them today. Okay. But it's a great option. Mm -hmm. So two layers of the Pallon insole fleece. And then we'll start assembling our rectangle layers, our elements. So we'll take one of the outer fabrics, this is the inside fabric, a layer right sides together with a Teflon iron quick. Okay. But first we need to head to the ironing board. We need to fuse the interfacing to the back side of the outer fabrics. So steam and press and steam and press, mm -hmm. and use a fine mist bottle. Really wet down that pressing cloth to, to really create some steam and heat okay. for good adhesion to the back of the fabric. I think I've been afraid before to put the iron too hot and then it didn't mm -hmm. adhere and then it peels mm -hmm. off when you're sewing it. That's not a and good And you need program. the moisture. That's why we wet the pressing cloth so that you create steam. The okay. steam of the iron is nice, but just take your time and put the, the extra minutes into doing that, okay. and it'll have great adhesion, and it really makes the fabric nice and smooth and flat and professional looking on the outside. Oh, very good. Once our interfacing is in place on both our outer and inner outside fabrics, then we can pr place our layers together. So we're placing the outer fabric right sides together with a Teflon Iron Quick. And then we're backing it simply with one layer of the Pellon Insel Fleece. Okay. That's it. And then we're clipping all the way around. So we have our outside rectangle and our inside rectangle we would do the same thing too. Okay. Next we need to make an opening because we're going to sew around the edges of this and then turn it right side out. So take your 5-in-1 sliding gauge, the super size 5-in-1 sliding gauge, and mark. Mark an 8-inch opening. That's our no-sew zone. If we sew that shut, it will be difficult to turn the uh, casserole carrier elements right side out. Then you can make a pineapple upside down cake for your inside out casserole carrier. I like that, <laughs> good plan. Make lemons uh, from lemonade. What I like to do if I'm clipping all the way around with Wonder Clips is put something different there. So at that eight inch opening, I like to put just straight pins. Okay. 
and we're using the clover uh, flower head pins with this project. They're sturdy, they don't bend, and we're pinning through many layers, mm -hmm. especially when we get to the handles. So these will come in uh, handy later too. Before we head to the sewing machine, we need to add a little uh, element to help us later seal that opening shut. So on the right side, have you have, hold that open. On the right side of that eight inch opening on the fabric, you'll place an eight inch strip okay. of Clover's fusible tape. So we'll, we'll imagine that we did that. And then when we stitch, we're, we'll head to the sewing machine and we'll stitch those two long seams. In the next sample, I have those stitched. And you see, we, we left that no sew zone mm -hmm. open and we've stitched. We've stitched the long edge and the other long edge. And we don't stitch the side seams. After we stitch the long edges, we come back and sew those side edge seams. And we wrap, we wrap that side seam towards the end seam and catch it in the stitching seam. Oh, okay. Those are our wrap corners. That helps us ensure that we have nice sharp corners when we turn the casserole carrier right okay. side out. And that's a classic time-saving tip by Nancy. And then we'll want to do a little clipping and cut away that extra little uh, triangle that's in that seam. Okay. So we'll turn this each element right side out. You'll need to do this for the outer and the inner okay. casserole carrier. And you'll have two rectangles, just like that. An inner and an outer. Okay. And next we do some marking. We need to do some marking for the hook and loop tape and for the handles. We like to use the Clover's One Inch Bias Tape Maker to make handles. So that's certainly an option. We just cut two crosswise fabric strips. These are crosswise fabric strips, not bias st strips. Even though this is a bias tape maker, okay. we can still put straight grain crosswise fabric strips through the bias tape maker. So for these handles, you just cut two crosswise fabric strips, seam them together, and then insert them into the bias tape maker and press. It presses those edges over really nicely. The other option is to use cotton webbing handles. So pre-made cotton webbing handles. This is just two yards. Simple, it's ready made, ready to go. Two yards of cotton webbing will, will do the trick too. And there's a third option, you can combine the two. This is my favorite option. <laughs> That's your favorite option. It's the designer option. You're the designer, so you can choose to make handles that are a combination of the cotton webbing and the one inch bias tape. So what we would do is simply stitch. We'll head to the sewing machine and stitch that folded fabric strip to one of the sides. There's no right or wrong side with the cotton webbing mm -hmm. to one side of the cotton webbing. Once that's stitched, we take that two yards and we seam this together. Just those, those ends seam together. And these, this is nice with this webbing to use the flower head pins. They're nice and sturdy. Mm -hmm. Just sew a half inch seam okay. and then that creates a loop. And you wanna make sure your loop's not twisted. Right. <laughs> or you'll have twisty handles. <laughs> To get ready for the handles, we need to do some marking. So I like to use a six by 24 rotary cutting ruler. And the, the marking is super easy. Mm -hmm. We'll just slide the ruler down and align it with the edge of the, the rectangle and we'll mark. We'll mark that three inch handle placement, which is also our hook and loop placement. Okay. So you'll trace that entire three inch inside each long edge and I've already traced the bottom edge and that works really nicely those are the only two markings you have to make on that side oh very good the first marking is for the hook and loop tape and the hook and loop tape sticks together with the opposite pair that's mm -hmm. still clipped to the casserole carrier <laughs> and in order to put it in place we use Clover's double-sided basting tape that holds it in place really nicely until we stitch it. Okay. Now, you may be tempted to use the Velcro that already has adhesive on it. You don't want to use hook and loop tape with adhesive on it. Mm -hmm. That's not meant to sew through. You right. sew through hook and loop tape and apply Clover's double-sided basting tape. Otherwise, you'll be cleaning your needle for a long time. <laughs> it, you, you could stitch one or two or three stitches mm -hmm. and you'll be stuck.
So avoid um, that, that hook and loop tape that has that glue on it. <laughs> Now, I like to place the hook and loop tape on all the casserole carrier rectangles with the rough side of the hook and loop tape on the pretty fabric. Okay. So the fashion fabric has the rough side. And I like to do that so it's not abrasive. If we attach it to the other side, mm -hmm. then it could be a little bit abrasive to your fashion fabric. Okay. And it's also an easy way to remember where to place the, the hook and loop tape. Okay. And the whole idea is the hook and loop tape, you'll remove the paper backing and place it right inside that marked line. Just inside that marked line, right at the stitching line. Okay. And I didn't mention that. Optional, you could top stitch around. Once you turn it right side out, press it, mark it, top stitch all the way around. That gives it a nice finished look. Mm -hmm. And then add your hook and loop tape. So we're placing the rough side hook and loop tape at this end and you just release that paper backing and there will only be hook and loop tape on this end. There will not be any on that end. Oh. So you would think, you would think. <laughs> I would have done it that way. Right. Let's put one down here. Okay, there you go. And then I'll show you the trick. Because the, it, the casserole carrier wraps on itself, we need to wrap it so that means will have some hook and loop tape on the opposite, opposite side. So you'll do the same thing. You'll mark down three inches and add your soft side the soft hook side. and loop, loop tape there. And because we're tape basting it in place, mm -hmm. it will be there. Imagine that we have our soft hook and loop tape already uh, pressed down in place on that end okay. and on this end. And let's turn it back over and we'll do some strap placement. So we'll bring back, back your designer straps and we'll just find the middle. Here's that seam mm -hmm. that we seamed. And then we'll find the halfway point. And I'll put a pin there at that halfway point. And you just place that halfway point pin and the other handle right inside that three inch marked line. And pins are great for this. Wonder clips are great for the edge work. Mm -hmm. And then we'll pin this all the way around. And I like to place the hook and loop tape first. That's how I know where to stop stitching. So the hook and loop tape sections are cut six inches long. Okay. And we'll stitch around with our handles. Oh, just about an inch short of that. So we'll stop stitching here. So once we have this all pinned in place, then we head to the sewing machine and we stitch. We stitch all the way around the handles, stopping about eight inches from the edge of the fabric. Okay. We'll stitch the top, the bottom, and then we'll top stitch the hook and loop tape in place on both ends. And because we have the rough side always on the fashion fabric side, and the hook side, the soft side, mm -hmm. on the underside, we know it'll work. And we'll do the same thing for the inner wrap, wrap it up casserole carrier. We'll mark again with the ruler three inches in, and it's the same for the inner mm -hmm. as the outer. And we'll just trace again. Trace that three inch marked line. Only on the inner tote, the inner casserole carrier, we really only need to trace to eight inches mm -hmm. because we're not placing handles on the inner tote. Sure. So you could stop tracing at the eight inch mark and we've already done that. Uh, on your end. You can see a little bit of marking and we'll place two hook and loop tapes on the inner tote on your end, the okay. opposite end. Oh, okay. And so it just places right inside, right inside the marked line. The marked mm -hmm. line meeting at the seam. Right. And then we'll, we'd place another rough hook and mm -hmm. loop tape to the, the inside of that marked line. Okay. No handles on this one. Then if your side has this, the, the rough hook and loop tape, the soft side goes here. So the soft goes on the mm -hmm. inside of the marked line. Right. Just release that paper. And place that right, it doesn't have to be exact, but right inside that line, mm -hmm. staying inside about a quarter inch if you've top stitched all the way around. Okay. That gives us two sections. And as long as you have the hook loop on the outside and the soft loop on the opposite end on the inside, you're good to go. We'll head to the sewing machine 
and we'll stitch all the way around. Top stitch that hook and loop tape in place, okay? And the next sample shows the handle already stitched in place, the rough hook and loop tape on the outside. Mm -hmm. Let's see what's under your side. Yeah, on the inside, the, the, soft, soft. the soft part of the hook and loop tape. And then on the underside, we have the inner wrap it up casserole carrier section. Again, the rough side is here, mm -hmm. soft side is there. And that next step is to assemble the two pieces together. So we'll bring back the outer casserole carrier and you can do some measuring and make sure that you're measuring the equal, equal amount inside each edge mm -hmm. and you'll have a 90 degree intersection. We'll head back to the sewing machine and we'll top stitch. And we'll top stitch both along the side seams. Okay. And then only one row of stitching across attaching the two together. When we look at the finished casserole carrier, we'll open it up and those two rows of hook and loop tape do a great job holding that in place. Yes. And when we look inside, there's our hot dish, our empty hot dish. Oh. And here's our pocket. Oh, that's very Because cool. we've stitched around just the three seams, the three sides, mm -hmm. we have that little pocket. And it's optional. You don't have to have that pocket. But look what's inside. My pot holder. A pot holder. <laughs> a pot holder with a pocket. Mm -hmm. That's a project you can find at the blog site, nancyzeman.com slash blog. Our wrap it up casserole carrier is adjustable with the hook and loop closures. It can easily accommodate rounder square casserole dishes up to nine inches. Our wrap it up casserole carrier will make a great birthday gift for all of our sisters. Oh, well, we'll have to finish all the samples and make sure that each sister receives a wrap it up casserole carrier. They'll be so surprised. <laughs> we hope you've enjoyed the Stitch It Sisters project. You'll find this pattern along with a limited number of project bundle boxes at stitchitsisters.com. Be sure to tune in again for another Stitch It Sisters sewing adventure. In the meantime, connect with Stitch It Sisters and friends on our social sites. Stitch It Sisters is made possible by Bernina, Clover, Riley Blake Designs, OESD, Oklahoma Embroidery Supply and Design, and shopnzp.com. Bernina, made to create.